What did you discover about Amy Winehouse that made your heartbeat get stronger and stronger while telling oh, this? Such a nice question. Um, I want people to hear my voice. No, no, no. Well, I want to start asking you, Alison. I think that the only place where Amy's truth could be found was in the lyrics of her songs and in her music. But besides getting immersed into her music, did you also get the chance to talk to her closest ones? Friends, family, ex-husband, I don't know. Yeah, we spoke to we we spoke to a few people. Uh, we I we I spoke with Janice and with Blake and with Mitch and uh, various various members of her assorted acquaintance. But obviously, also by the time we came to make make the movie, even uh, even before I decided to make the film, we had there was so much written about Amy. One one came to it with such a with with such a wealth of of information. It was more a question of trying to. Uh, kind of sieve it and 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 decide what was useful and what what wasn't. And I felt like it was time for us to just look at her through her eyes, her perspective, and to feel that again, and to feel like the music really tells her story better than anyone else. And um, and that to make this film in that way was the right way to make it because it felt like then we could celebrate her music again. I think it was a wonderful expression of of the trauma that she was going through in her life. She had lots of issues and she, and the thing is, if you make it, I find it within myself. If you're creative, what, what creativity does, it enables you to, in life in general, trauma is so overwhelming that you can't be objective. And what being creative means is that you can experience your trauma, but be objective at the same time. So you're not subject to your trauma. And that's what she did. That's why her music wasn't about being impressive, wasn't about being rich, wasn't about manipulating an audience. It was just an authentic response to trauma. And I think that that's why it appeals to people because there's an authenticity and an honesty to it. From primary school. No, no, no. To sell out concerts. It's gonna happen one of these days. Voice like yours, no, no, got to. No. If I could describe the movie as an emotion or a feeling, I would say that it feels like a heartbeat getting stronger and stronger. And wow. it really moved me because I didn't realize she was such a sensitive soul, you know? So mm -hmm. what did you discover about Amy Winehouse that made your heartbeat get stronger and stronger while telling oh, this? Such a nice question. Um, I think something that will stay with me is, um, it, you know, it's her her bravery. I think um, she, no matter how kind of emotionally like raw and vulnerable she was, she was brave enough to to be honest about her feelings and to tell her truth through her music, this beautiful music. And I think that, you know, she was she was honest and she was willing to be completely authentic no matter what this space she wasn't you know a, a shapeshifter she didn't change according to who was in front of her she was herself in any given moment and I think that that's something that is incredibly rare and that I found a real a real you know joy to get close to this movie has no villains at all because uh, when uh, Amy uh, started her career and then when she died, the press uh, made us believe that there were certain villains in her life, like Blake. Well, it was very interesting. I don't think of life as being... as uh, uh, I don't believe in the narrative of villains and victims. Hmm. And a wise person once said, whenever, whenever someone perpetuates the idea of villains and victims, who are they in that scenario? If someone tells you that you're the you're the victim and I'm the villain, who are they? Invariably, they're the hero. Okay, and if they're the hero, it's an it's a narcissistic idea of themselves. And God forbid if the victim changed their own personality, decided they didn't want to be the victim anymore, they wanted to have their own volition. You watch the people who claim to be the heroes. They say to the victims, "No, you be what I tell you to be because this is my story." It's a narcissistic narrative perpetuated by people who want to be seen as the heroes. There's no villains and victims. There's just unhappy people in search of happiness. That's all there is. You're my heartbeat. You're my soul. I love you. 
you. And my tears dry. I don't bang out tenets by lunch. I need to live my songs. There is a quote of Amy Winehouse that goes, every bad situation is a blues song waiting to happen. I really love this quote. So mm -hmm. would you say that Amy was one of the legends who really managed to transform painful situations into creativity? Yes, I, I definitely think so. I mean, I think it's, you know, she she was able to like understand a, a, how she felt about a situation in a sort of emotionally mature enough way to put it into poetry. I mean, there's kind of, there's there's intellect and artistry in all of her songs in that sense. But I also think that, you know, it's good to remember that like, you know, people often say that she needed to feel pain in order to create music. And I, I don't know that I agree with that. I think that pain was an inspiration for the album Back to Black. But we also discuss, we also look at Frank in this film. And Frank is a very, very funny album, you know. And she, I think it shows that, like, she had the capability to create incredible music that people would enjoy through huge periods of joy in her life as well as as well as pain. Oh, 